simplicity, Leonardo da Vinci has been quoted as saying, is the ultimate sophistication. It may sound like a truism, this, but perhaps that in itself makes it worth bearing in mind as we talk about visualization. Because the subject of this part of our MOOC unites upon itself a myriad of techniques and a spectrum of approaches that allow for untold levels of sophistication and differentiation, as well as both artistic and technical detail, precision and accuracy. At the heart of it, though, lies a simple premise and goal. To bring to life, visually, an object that for some reason or other cannot be pictured by capturing it on a camera as it is, be that because it doesn't as yet exist, or because it has ceased to exist in the way it once did. Whichever technique you use, and there are dozens, drawing, sketching, collage, cartoons, photographic image editing and processing, modelling and rendering, to name but these few. The moment you do any of these on a computer to the end of generating a new image, you are in essence doing a form of digital painting, whereby painting here very broadly stands for creating a picture of the thing you want to represent deliberately. This is what distinguishes it from, say, taking a snapshot of a building with your camera and just leaving it as it is, or allowing a computer to work out a pattern of lines, shapes and surfaces based purely on some data you enter to come up with an exact but otherwise uncharacterized image of what it knows. What all visualization has in common is that it interprets the object it portrays and that it seeks to go beyond conveying mere information about it. It wants to trigger an emotional response and communicate something about the object that I, as the person visualizing it, know and feel about it. What I consider important how it sits in its context, what it was, is, or could be used for, what it means. Much as a painting conveys an artist's interpretation of a subject, again, be that a person, a building, a still life, an abstraction, a fantasy, or a void, so a visualization conveys an interpretation by the visualizer. As the visualizer, I have at my disposal exactly the same constituent elements that a painter or photographer has to give an image, character and emotional impact. Perspective, focus, light, colour and setting, framing, detail, texture and features, or indeed their absence. And whenever we show something that either does not yet or does no longer exist, we are skirting and quite often entering the realm not only of interpretation, but beyond that of fabrication. At the very least, we create an assembly of what we accept or assume to be knowable or possible facts. And that means there comes a considerable degree of responsibility with the act of visualization, because we are planting images in people's minds that can be difficult to shed or ignore. Now, this may be of little consequence if what we are visualizing is a fantastical utopian world for the sake of a piece of entertainment. It may be gravely serious, though, if we are visualizing an archaeological complex of historical significance or a new project that will redefine a city skyline. So, as a serious visualizer, you will learn to differentiate between what the program can and can't do and what it should or should not be used for in a given context. Visualization, then, and this can no doubt be said of any other digital creative process, is really a case of autonomous thinking, developing your style and using the software of your choice to arrive at what you want to achieve and understanding the principles of how the program helps you do this. And in this unit of our MOOC, we will be looking at some of the different approaches and techniques that are available and talk about the great potential and also some of the pitfalls that today's visualization software offers 
the digital architect.